Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. I am repotting this beauty. Pretty much all of my succulents need to be repotted, so hope you guys are on board for a bazillion repotting videos. I literally have a counter full of these guys who are so crowded. Look at this pot. This pot. This pot, it just keeps going. They've all just crowded out their space so much. But this guy, this beautiful Rick Rack cactus, um, I did videos on it before when it was blooming. You can see woo, some of the fruits now. There's a fruit right there. I'm gonna take all these off. They've stayed on a long time, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove them when I'm repotting. But this guy has completely run out of room. It's I don't even know that it's gonna be able to fully support the fruit to where it leaves out properly or leaves out a fruit ah um grow the fruit where it completely forms fully and gets as big as it could because it just i can't keep it moist enough and when you can't keep a succulent moist enough you know it's time to repot because they really don't need that much moisture these guys are epiphytes and they're used to continuous little bits of moisture but they don't want to sit in a bunch of wet soil but even with continuous little bits this just isn't enough so we are going to repot this guy i'm going to point you down and show you the fabulous pot that i got because basically let me show you this actually before we get going you can see okay see how nice and wide this is right here the rick rack part nice and wide versus this stem see how narrow this is okay see this stem it's nice and wide here at the at the bottom and then it gets really thin right here and then it's getting wide again all of this is because of sunlight exposure so i don't have a hook where this plant can hang in front of a window where it's not utterly mashed because the hook is too close to the window to where it's in a good I got a piece of plant bit on my lip to where it's in a good place for light and so we've had periods where it had really good light and then like this one it had to grow all the way up to here before it reached the top of the window and then now it was getting more light and all of this branch didn't get light and it just needs to be in a position where it can get light all the time and that position can't be hanging in a window so i've struggled to figure out how to get this guy the light he wanted we thought we would have our greenhouse up by now and we don't which is totally fine so before i point the camera down i'll show you this pot this is what i'm going to do kitties under my feet <laughs> I'm going to put it in a pedestal pot like this isn't it beautiful and that way it'll be up off the ground and can hang over so let's point it down and get going all right this one's kind of a big one so I we're gonna have to experiment with angles here I had to move the camera and set it up on top of my counter because it couldn't get high enough to to reach the stand even with this little low table that I'm on you couldn't see the the plant so first off this pot, as you can see, is very, very deep. These guys, which you can't see, but right up here is where the plant is hanging out for the moment. These guys that are epiphytes, like the um, Rick Rack cactus, don't need this deep of pots at all. They grow on trees, they have fairly shallow root systems, they like it that way. So, um, what I'm gonna do is use this pot, put it upside down in the bottom, and this is just gonna take up, take up a fair amount of space. This is a fairly good size six inch pot. I'm gonna do this this is gonna make it where it's closer to so let me set this pot in I'll just set this in on top of it where it's closer to about the same depth but it gives it a bit more room around and just a little bit more depth than the current pot that it's in so this will be it's sitting on that pot that I turned up upside down now so that's gonna be a great height I could have gone and done a one gallon which would have been a deeper pot but that was too much and would have crowded it too much so we're gonna set this back in for soil. For the part, for the part right around this pot down at the bottom, I'm just putting regular potting soil because it's highly unlikely the roots will ever get down that far anyways. But we just need something to fill it up. And if they do venture down, it'll be there waiting for them. These guys like a little bit more bark, as you might imagine, since they grow on trees naturally. So now that that is filled in a little bit, I am going to add some orchid bark. You can add any, any kind of orchid bark. I would prefer bigger chips, but these are the only ones I had right now, and I don't really want to go buy more. I just gave a lot of my 
orchid supplies away because I got rid of all of my orchids because I just can't keep the amount of plants I have right now now that I'm feeling well enough to be doing my herbal business again. So usually I would use a little bit larger pieces but these are just fine and I'm going to mix a little moist soil. There's a little bit of extra pumice in here but not too much. In my experience epiphytes don't like pumice a ton. They would rather um, organic material which of course makes sense. So I'm just kind of using this pot as a mixer and then I'm going to scoop a little bit of this out again and put it back into my handy dandy bowl so that I can get it mixed evenly but then put the plant in and put this around it. So we'll mix this up. And I don't know if this will be a two-part video or if I'll be able to fit it all in, but it has some pruning and some dead leaves and a few things that are dying that need to be cut back. And I thought I would show you guys just because it might be interesting. All right, I'm just leaving barely just a little bit of cover over this pot that I have as the bottom. And I'm going to set this down right here, and we may end up doing it down here just because me dumping this pot out isn't going to fit in the shot otherwise. So I'm going to set it down here. Now, to get these guys out of their pots, there's a couple ways to do it. I prefer doing it when they're dry, not when they're wet, um, but it's up to you. The soil tends to stay on a little bit better. Either you can take skewers or orchid stakes, whatever works, and stab them in. If you've watched my video on repotting burrows tails, this is a great technique. I'm not actually going to use this technique this time, but I'm just showing you in case, especially for smaller ones or for big ones, you need larger stakes. Then you just grab a hold of all of them and tip your pot out. And if this was a smaller plant, it would give you a handle to kind of hold it upside down and kind of place it into your other pot. Again, if that's confusing and you would like to see the technique, you can look here on my channel for my burrow's tail repotting video and you can see exactly how that works. Now, this is easy enough and has plenty of stuff to grasp on. I'm just going to dump it upside down and dump it out. So I'm just going to put my fingers down here and wedge my thumb and forefinger right against the soil and turn it over and just remove the pot. And then it has the little disc in the bottom. We're going to remove that. Look at the soil and the roots. Isn't she happy? She's going to be so much happier. That's a little heavy to do with one arm. All right. We're going to tip her right in just like that. And I am going to run grab a pair of clippers because I think this will actually be easier to do now rather than when we repot it. So I guess it's going to be all in the same video. I shall return. All right, I'm taking you off the stand for a minute. I tried to do it on the stand and you just couldn't see well enough. So down inside of these stems, you can see the beautiful color these are. And they're all dusty. This guy is going to get a beautiful shower in our shower once he's all repotted and watered and he'll be so happy. So he's a bit dusty. He's been out in the shop in this window here and my husband's been doing woodworking and making some things and <laughs> putting sawdust everywhere so they're pretty dusty. But you can still see the contrast between this color green and this color and you can see how it's kind of shriveling up. I'm going to kind of unweave this. Alright, see this color and it's, it's not mushy like fully mushy. This guy has been slowly doing this for about 8 months. Um, so it's not rot, it wasn't over watered. Um, what did happen is it got out when it was a little bit too cold and a few of these branches got frost bit because I we had a really early fall this year, like r earlier than I've ever seen and we've uh, I've lived here since 1996 and so this is 2020 now, so quite a while. And this was just a really crazy early spring, or sorry, fall, and um, all of my plants were still out on the porch, which should have been just fine, and some of them got nipped. Now, because this one's down inside, I highly doubt this is cold damage, because if there was going to be cold damage, it would have been on these tips, and that's what it was before. There was just a few branches whose tips got frozen off, and I had to cut. They just turned the same kind of translucent. There, you can see it in the light really good. It's kind of a translucent 
sad color. So this guy is dying and there's no reason to leave him here. I'm actually going to cut him all the way off. He's already sent out two new branches. This guy has come off of that same root stock as well as this one over here. So cutting this one back and there's a few, well, I'm going to just cut it off and then I'll show you what it looks like because you can't really see. It does go back in here with another and all of it needs to be pruned, this whole thing. So I'm going to put you back up on the stand where you won't be able to see as well, but I'll be able to show you and use both my hands. All right, so I'm going to cut this off. I got my pruners here. We're going to go down in here. All right, so this is what I removed, all three of these, and they're all turning this yellowy, translucent color, as you can see. And like I said, I gave these plenty of months to see if something happened. This, this started right when they got cold, but I have no idea if it has to do with that or not. And it does look just like the ones that got frosted. It's still alive. It's not mushy, but it is going to die eventually. And I just know from having plants and these kind of plants for long enough that this isn't going to recover. So I'm just pruning it off, but the base of the root still had this beautiful leaf coming off of it here so it's still going good and strong all right let me just peek in here and see if anything else yeah here's one more that could be removed and sometimes people get really really anxious about pruning their succulents and afraid they're going to hurt them this piece is just not doing very well and starting to shrivel up and look unhappy as well but it's very natural. Plants and animals, or not plants, but animals and people would crawl, you know, on top of them, bump into them, birds would bump into them, pieces would fall off. Um, it's very, very normal and natural. And a lot of plants actually benefit greatly from being pruned once in a while. And when you prune off old things that the plant is struggling to keep alive, it root, um, frees up energy for them to take care of their other stuff. And I really want all of the available energy freed up so that it can put it into its fruits. Here's another little stem that's brown and translucent like that, like you can see. It's just kind of squishy. So that's gonna come off. All right, I think that's it. Now I'm going to prune off all of these flowers, and this is not a necessary step, but these flowers, since they're attached so well, they tend to catch things. And when I'm moving around and doing a lot of stuff around this, they catch on things and then they can cause enough torque to actually pull off the fruit if you're given the right chance. So I'm only trimming these off. I wouldn't trim them off if I wasn't repotting this. I would just leave them because they make me happy and they're still pretty, but they can be removed once they're pollinated just fine. They don't need to stay. I just tend to leave things as they are naturally just because here's another one but I don't want any of these to catch and I'm also moving this guy in the house out of the garage after this and I just don't want any this to be tempting for pets to paw at or anything like that they're just these little puff balls hanging from plants are pretty luring <laughs> for animals all right now for the dirt we're gonna This guy's new room. I'm just going to go around the outside, adding a little bit in and then smoothing it around and kind of stuffing it down in between the pot and the soil that the plant already had just to eliminate any air pockets. I don't want any air pockets around it, ideally, if possible. Um, the roots just don't, don't really like that a lot. Although um, epiphyte roots don't seem to care nearly as much and a few air pockets tend to be pretty, pretty okay for them. So I'm not going crazy, but I would for the most part like this to have a bit more soil, predominantly because I want it to have more nutrients available to it. Um, and speaking of nutrients, let me show you this right quick before I continue. I'm actually feeding it at the same time. I have some of this in the soil that I'm using. Um, because this is a organic fertilizer that you just mix into the soil. Let me get my container here. Because this guy would like a little bit of food. Ooh, if this is going to focus, it might be too bright. 
There we go. Primal plant food. This is what I'm giving it, and I have a scoop of this in, mixed in this dirt that I'm putting around it, just so that it can get a little bit of extra oomph for its fruit production. And I'm going to fill in a little bit more dirt over the top of these stems also. The dirt has settled a lot since these cuttings were planted. And so I'm just going to bury the stems themselves up just a little bit more. Not too much. Just a little bit. And for those of you who haven't seen the videos on this guy and the fruit, um, I pollinated these blooms when they bloomed this winter and last winter also. And they make a fruit that's kind of like a cross between um, a dragon fruit and maybe a kiwi, but it tastes minty. So it's sweet and it has the texture of a dragon fruit, but it tastes like mint, um, which is kind of exciting but startling if you're biting into a fruit and not expecting it. Like when my son, who's eight, tried them for the first time, he was like, Oh, whoa! And then I said, it's minty! Isn't it good? And then he went, oh, yeah, it is good! But if you're just kind of thinking, you know, strawberry flavored or whatever, fruity, 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 um, it's a little surprising when the mint comes in, but if you're pres if you're aware that it's going to be minty, it's actually really delicious. And I'm excited about these fruits being ready, too. I would totally keep this plant without it flowering or fruiting. I just... Excuse me. I just love these guys. I love orchid cactuses and a lot of epiphytes in general. Someday I would love to just have a whole greenhouse full of epiphytes. All right, let's get over here. All right, I think we're good. I am going to get this guy down and um, give him a really nice rinse off in the shower and a water to help things uh, settle and then we'll see if it needs more Any more soil if anything settles after being watered Or not so I will take you into the shower and we will go from there All right, so we're in the shower and they love a little bit of warm Warm water not hot but warm and I do this to most of my plants every once in a while plants breathe through their leaves and so when they get dust and debris on their leaves it makes it really hard for them to breathe and they can really struggle and sometimes it's a little bit of a mystery for people because they're like, I'm doing everything right, um, but maybe their plants are just needing a little bit of a rinse and especially with epiphytes because they grow on trees in tropical areas. They are used to having showers every couple of days and rinsing off their leaves so they especially, especially like having showers. Um, this pot, as you might have seen, doesn't have drainage when we started, and so I'm not watering it a ton. I just gave it a nice little rinse and I'll just water it frequently, not all the time, um, but it's pretty happy. It's gonna go to his new home. The dirt didn't settle too much, so I think we're just gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna let him settle in for probably four or five days and then see if he needs some more water. All right, so that's it for this guy. And I will have lots more videos for you soon. I will show you this guy once he gets in his happy new home, which you will be very excited about. And until next time, happy growing.